Chapter 336 and 338. A few days later. Amidst the howling wind that swept the yellow sand into the sky, turning the entire sky dim, two travelers were walking on the sand dunes, walking through the sandstorm, compared to the occurring sandstorm both of them seemed to be very small, just like two inconspicuous grains. These two travelers wearing a black hooded cloak that covered them entirely are obviously none other than Hyuga Kuroto and Uchiha Shirsue. There was no need to emphasize the danger of the Akatsuki organization to Sandim Sama, after hearing the fact that the leader of Akatsuki is probably multiple times stronger than Hanzo. With his experience, Sandim naturally understood that if you want to launch an effective surprise attack on Akatsuki, then secrecy, surprise, and timing are of key importance here. The entirety of success and failure depends on these three key factors. To ensure the latter two key factors, the first is of more priority. And to maintain secrecy, it must be ensured that intelligence does not leak from any source. For this reason, Sandame did not arrange other Umbu squads to pass on the message to Reikich and Kazakage. Sending Umbu Team 11 for this task who had just reported the location of Akatsuki's base, limits the number of hands and ears involved in the matter. So, it further ensures that the number of mouths and brains who would be aware of the intelligence would be highly limited. Thus, narrowing the scope of people involved. To contact two villages at the same time, Team 11 had to be split into subgroups. And after years of work of the four in the Umbu department, Sandame is also aware of Kakashigai and Kuroto Shirsue duo, so he naturally split the team into these two teams. The purpose of not sending Shirsue and Kuroto to Kumogakure was also to ensure that Reikage does not lose his temper upon being reminded of the events of the Valley of the Land of Lightning as well as the Hyuga affair. As such, Kakashi and Gai are on their way to Kumogakure, meanwhile, Kuroto and Shirsue are on their way to Sunagakure. The raging sandstorm made it difficult for normal shinobi to open their eyes, but these two are obviously not normal. Shirsue squinted his eyes, then asked Kuroto aloud, Kuroto-san, our direction is not wrong, right? To ensure the secrecy of this mission, Kuroto and Shirsue did not take the commercial road or any other common routes but took a very uncommon route that no one travels on because of the frequent raging sandstorms occurring here. Byakugan Activating his Byakugan, Kuroto looked around. However, all he saw was endless desert and sandstorms raging on this endless desert. So, determining the right direction was difficult, even the sun is not clear so determining the direction of Sunagakure using the movements is difficult. Using Byakugan to locate Sunagakure doesn't seem to be possible. Sighing slightly, Kuroto closed his eyes, then opened them again, this time his pupils changed into beautiful royal blue, it was obviously Tensigan. After activating Tensigan, Kuroto formed some hand signs, and instantly purple dragon wings made of chakra sprouted on his back. With Ryumyaku wings on his back, the next Kuroto-controlled rain will interactive force to form with silent zone around him. Within this silent zone, the raging winds of sandstorm stagnated, forming sort of a low wind zone. Next, he flapped the chakra wings on his back and flew vertically high, then looked at the direction they were moving in. Not long after, he landed back and dispersed the chakra wings, and said to Shirsue, the direction we are moving in is correct, but the area that these sandstorms cover is vast, so it would take a few more hours for us to make out of it, then a few more days to reach Sunagakure. Shirsue nodded, and they both started traveling. While walking next to Kuroto, Shirsue can't help but think, I must get stronger, with the way I am, I am only dragging down Kuroto-san. Although the previous display of techniques by Kuroto was nothing big, it still made Shirsue feel powerless. Shirsue knows that with just a wave of his hand, Kuroto-san can easily disperse the sandstorm. In fact, he doesn't even need to travel to Sunagakure on foot when he could just fly there. It is only because he is with Kuroto that Kuroto is using this method. With these thoughts in his mind, Shirsue suddenly remembered something that Tsukihai once said, those eyes are Tensigen and they hold the potential to be on the same level as the Rinnegan. And he can't help but be curious, Kuroto-san, the leader of Akatsuki has Rinnegan, the eyes of Rikudo-san mean, and Tsukihai said that your Tensigen holds the same potential as the Rinnegan, so what do you think, which dojitsu is superior of the two, Pain's Rinnegan or your Tensigen? Kuroto was surprised by Shirsue's sudden question, he thought about it a little then replied. I have never fought against someone with Rinnegan before so I can't be sure which dojitsu is superior. But if you ask me potentially both of them are of equal caliber. The outcome of a battle between the two dojitsu users would depend on the strength of the wielders of the said eyes, not on the dojitsu themselves. This is Kuroto's belief. For analogy's sake, the same weapon would show different performance when it is in the hands of an amateur, or when it is in the hands of a master. 
The strength of Rinnegan displayed by Nagato was much inferior compared to what Uchiha Abito displayed with just one Rinnegan, and that was also much inferior to what Uchiha Madara displayed. The Rinnegan itself was the same in the eyes of the three, the difference lied in the abilities of the three. Tensegen II holds the potential of being on the same level as Rinnegan and compared to the level he started at the time of awakening it, Kuroto has come too far ahead. What worries Kuroto now is that his personal growth curve has started to slow down. Time has been passing but there is not much change. And what worries him, even more, is that he has no idea why he has fallen into such stagnation. Kuroto has of course made many theories to understand this, but only one of them seems reasonable. He feels that this is because of his lack of understanding of Senjutsu, to cross the realm of Super Kage and to ascend to the Rikudo Senin realm, he has to learn to use Rikudo Senin mode. But is that easy? Obviously no. Even after awakening Rinnegan, even after being in contact with Ghetto statue for so long, Madara still needed to become Jubi's Jinchuriki to learn to use Rikudo Senin mode. At this time Shirsui said, I believe that you will not lose Kuroto-san. Kuroto smiled and nodded. Tendo Pain's Shinra Tensei could flatten the entire Kanoha in one shot, Rikudo Pain then fought against Uzumaki Naruto in the Senin mode as well as Toads of Mount Mayaboku. Then he also fought and held off against the Berserk Kyubi whose eight tails were liberated. And even after that, he still had enough chakra to bring thousands of Kanoha Shinobi back to life. So, Nagato is also no joke. Kuroto believes that he is not weaker compared to Nagato, and if the two were to engage in a life and death fight, then it would definitely be him who would survive, that is to say, Nagato would ultimately die at his hands. That is if they do engage in a life and death fight. Seeing Kuroto's nod, Shirsui said, I just hope that we can completely solve Akatsuki this time, so that the village will remain safe. Kuroto thought a little and said, don't hold too high expectations, the success and failure will entirely depend on Akatsuki organization's response. If they do not make any mistakes, it will be very difficult to eliminate them all at once. Shirsui nodded. And the two continued their casual conversation along the way. Soon they passed through the sandstorm and successfully reached Sunagakure after a few more days of travel. As soon as they entered the territory of the Sunagakure they were spotted by Suna Shinobi, then stopped the two, and asked, who are you two and your purpose? Both Kuroto and Shirsui lifted their hoods at the same time and revealed their Kanoha Shinobi forehead protector, following which Kuroto said, We are Kanoha Shinobi, and we are here upon Hokage-sama's order to pass on a message to Kazakage Dano about the matter of joint chunin exams. The Shinobi looked at each other and nodded, but they still did not drop their kanai and asked again, Verify your names? Hyuga Kuroto. Uchiha Shirsui. The captain of the team noted down the details and then said, Two of you, please follow me. Kuroto and Shirsui nodded and followed the leader. Kanoha and Suna are in an alliance, so it is somewhat normal for the shinobi of one village to travel to another village because of many different matters. Moreover, joint chunin exams is a topic that has been in talks for a while now, so the leader of the team was not too surprised by the arrival of Kanoha shinobi. Led by the patrol team of Sunagakure, Kuroto and Shirsui entered into Sunagakure through the narrow cleft between the two cliff faces. As one of the five great shinobi villages, Sunagakure is naturally not small in size. Being surrounded by the desert on all sides, Sunagakure lies in a fortified valley behind cliffs of rock, with only a single passage in and out of the village, making it a very hard target of invasion by foreign enemies. Inside the village, the houses are made up of clay or stucco which help them keep a cool internal temperature, there are some small and large oases nearby that make survival in this scorching hot desert possible. Walking through the village, Kuroto's first impression of the village was a depressive atmosphere. Although the desert's geographical location does give Sunagakure a natural deterrent against invasion, there are also many negative effects. The main cons of the desert environment are obviously the lack of a proper crop and habitable environment. As a result, Sunagakure is very poor when compared to the other shinobi villages, especially when compared to Kanoha. Because of the unsuitable natural environment, Land of Wind is one of the poorest countries among the elemental nations, even with it being the country with the most land area. Because of its weak economy, Sunagakure's strength is also the weakest among the five great shinobi villages. Although the average strength of its shinobi is higher when compared to some other villages, however, because of the lack of resources, the number of shinobi Sunagakure can cultivate is limited. Leaving the Kazakage no choice but to adopt the elite route. In fact, there are also rumors that the daimyo of Land of Wind has limited economic support to Sunagakure. Which has further increased Sunagakure's troubles. 
In fact, there are speculations that even after its decades of turmoil and civil war, the strength of the current Kirigakure is still higher than the current Sunagakure. This fact is also clearly evident from the distribution ratio of the nine bijou. Kyumogakure, Iwagakure, and Kirigakure each has two bijou, meanwhile, Kanahagakure, Sunagakure, and Takigakure have one bijou each. The reason why Kanoha has only one bijou is courtesy of the Shodame Hokage's foolishness. Regardless, Kanoha still has Kyubi, the strongest of the nine bijou, but the focus here is Sunagakure, which is a great shinobi village yet it has only one bijou. Even at the time of distribution of bijou, the then Kazakage demanded part of arable land from Kanoha and 30% of bijou purchase prices from the rest of the four great nations, clearly accentuating the poor condition of Sunagakure. So overall, Sunagakure is pretty poor and this fact is still visible. Under the leadership of the captain of the patrol unit, Kuroto and Shursue made an immediate request to meet the Kazakage Dano. The captain of the patrol unit obviously agreed and asked Kuroto and Shursue to wait at the guesthouse while Kazakage-sama is informed of the news of the arrival of two Kanoha shinobi. Sitting in the room of the guesthouse, Shursue whispered lightly, Kuroto-san, Sunagekyo's situation doesn't seem good, I would say that it is even more terrible than the last time we visited here. Kuroto nodded and said, it seems that the rumors about daimyo cutting funds are true. Shursue nodded, of course, he is also aware of this information, but doing so is sort of foolish on wind daimyo's part. Anyone with discerning eyes can see that Sunagakure is getting weaker by the years. And if daimyo also decreases the support, then Sunagakure will become nothing more than a lamb to be slaughtered and distributed among four sides, each one fighting for the biggest piece of the treat. Kuroto said, Daimyo probably thinks that because Sunagakure is in alliance with Kanoha, so other nations will not dare to declare open war against the land of wind. Without the pressure of external threat, Daimyo will obviously save what he can hear and use those funds on other matters. Shursue sighed, however, this is short-sighted behavior. Kuroto nodded, hmm, it is indeed short-sighted behavior. After a pause, Kuroto continued, but this is because of the land of wind's basic problem. One of the main reasons why Sunagakure is still intact is because of the current Kazakage's Kekiai Genkai. Yandame Kazakage's magnet release is based on gold dust, which is essentially gold, so with the help of his magnet release, Kazakage Raza contributes to the village finances. Kuroto also once thought of this approach but it resulted in a major failure. The nature of magnet release is not a standard one, with different variations appearing with different users. Because of this, Sandame Kazakage uses iron sand, while Yandame Kazakage uses gold sand. Similar to how Uchiha Sasuke's blaze release is based on Amaterasu, while Uchiha Tsukihai's blaze release is based on Amenoshihomami. Therefore, Sandame Kazakage's puppet was unable to collect gold dust effectively, as effectively as Kazakage Raza. To be honest, Kuroto really hoped that Sandame Kazakage can master to control gold dust, as this is the most profitable Kekiai Genkai can instantly make you rich. But alas, it doesn't seem to be possible. Kazakage Office After dropping Hyuga Kuroto and Uchiha Shursue at the guest house, the captain of the patrol guard came to Kazakage office, to inform Kazakage-sama of the arrival of two Kanoha shinobi. Kazakage-sama, Uchiha Shursue, and Hyuga Kuroto of Kanoha have arrived with the message from Kanoha's Hokage regarding the joint chunin exams. Said the captain of the patrol while he kneeled before Kazakage. But it seemed as if Kazakage Raza was busy in some thoughts, he didn't pay any particular attention to the words of the captain and just waved his hands, signaling him to leave. The captain nodded and left the Kazakage office. With the message delivered, his job here was done and he had to return to his post. After a while, one of the elders of Suna, named Chiyo came to the Kazakage office. Realizing the deep look on Kazakage Raza's face, Chiyo asked, have you decided? Brought out of his thoughts by Chiyo's words, Raza gazed at the village, then nodded, tonight is the day, if he can pass the test, he will live, otherwise, I have no other choice than killing him as the way he is, he is a threat to the village. Chiyo sighed softly, then asked, who are you going to entrust with this task? Kazakage Raza did not turn back and said indifferently, Yashimaru. Chiyo was surprised, what? Do you intend to appoint Yashimaru with this task? He is Karura's Otuto, moreover. Will he really be able to do something so cruel to the child? Kazakage Raza said, he is the only one who can do it. After all, Yashimaru is the one who can do it, after all, he is the caretaker of that child. For the sake of the village, this test must be conducted. Listening to these words, Chiyo can only shake her helplessly. She then left the office and gave Raza the silence he needed. After all, 
Hardening the decision to kill your own child is not an easy matter. On the same night, guest house where Kuroto and Shirsue are staying. Both of them are waiting for the summons from the Kazakage since morning, however, the sun has already set, and the sky has darkened but there is still no response from the Kazakage. Even the shinobis around have no idea what's keeping the Kazakage occupied. After taking a sip of green tea, Shirsue asked, Kuroto-san, is it possible that Kazakage is not in the village currently? Kuroto lifted his from the book his reading, then replied, it's possible. It stands to reason that Kuroto and Shirsue are here with Hokage-sama's personal message for the Kazakage. So, in a way, they are here representing the Hokage, yet Kazakage has not responded, this is obviously strange. The only possibility that might be keeping him away could be his current absence from the village, otherwise, why would he allow two shinobi from another shinobi village to stay inside his village for so long for no reason? Kuroto's words came to a sudden halt, as he looked towards the window with a frowned expression. Shirsue also put down the teacup, and immediately stood up while asking, do you sense that Kuroto-san? Such powerful chakra fluctuations. Kuroto nodded, and he also stood up, mmm, I would be strange to not feel this chakra, it reminds me of a bijou, and why is it coming towards us? Kazakage Office With sudden sounds of flashing, an umbu appeared in Kazakage Office, he knelt and reported to Kazakage Raza, Kazakage-sama, Yashimaru is dead. However, the Kazakage, who had one of his hands over his left eye did not show any reaction even after hearing the news of Yashimaru's death. Not even a trace of flicker in his right eye. In fact, there was no need for the Umbu Shinobi to report. Kazakage with his third eye jutsu had already witnessed the suicide of Yashimaru. And knew the direction in which that monster is going, and ordered, evacuate residentials of the third section. The Umbu hurriedly asked, and what about the two Kanoha Shinobi staying in the guest house of section, 3? Kazakage's frown deepened, and it was only now he remembers something about two Kanoha shinobi coming to the village with Hokage's message regarding the joint chunin exams, realizing the emergency of the situation, Kazakage hurriedly said, guide them to the second section. Oh no, it seems to be late. I have to go to the third section as soon as possible otherwise both the Kanoha shinobi will most likely die at the hands of that monster. Pakura, the leader of Sunagekyo's Umbu squad had just returned to the village after completing a task and was now on her way to the Kazakage office. However, before she could enter, the gate of the Kazakage office opened, and Raza walked out hurriedly and almost collided with Pakura. Seeing the look on the Kazakage's face, Pakura immediately understood that some kind of emergency situation has arisen, and the first thing she could think that would make Kazakage so much panicked was obvious, Gara lost control? Raza nodded with a disappointed expression. This test was supposed to determine how much control Gara has over his sand and Ichibi's power, but it seems that everything was useless, Gara failed the test, and it appears that he has even gone berserk. At this time, Chio and Ebizo of the Suna Elder Council also rushed over. Everybody could feel the violent and raging chakra of Ichibi, and worried about the village's safety Chio said to Raza, Ichibi must not be allowed to go on a rampage. We are not Kanoha, we cannot recover from such a wound as Kanoha did. Raza nodded and started running towards Gara. Chio, Ebizo, Pakura, and other Umbu shinobi obviously followed. Because of their combat style, Chio and Ebizo are not suitable to suppress a bijou class monster. Even someone as strong as Chio is helpless in the face of a bijou, she can very well protect herself but cannot fight and suppress a bijou. Pakura is not so helpless anymore, she has tried to counter this weakness of hers in the past few years, after all, the encounter with Morio the demon did give her insights on her weaknesses, and she has worked her butt off to eliminate this weakness. But it is hard to tell if she will be able to suppress a chibi in its home environment. So, the Kazakage Raza is obviously the best choice, in the entire Sunagekure, he is the only one who can successfully suppress a chibi using his magnet release. While running towards Gara, Kazakage kept the use of his third eye, but it was soon noticed by something and was repeatedly destroyed by emerging sand. Raza would control gold sand to create a new eye, but it would be destroyed within a second by sand. Realizing this, Raza's expression only turned gloomier. Pakura asked, what's wrong? Kazakage replied, for one, he has noticed my third eye, and is repeatedly destroying its sand, so it's no point keeping it active anymore. And second, he is moving in the direction of the guest house of the third section. The guest house of the third section. After a pause, Pakura continued, so what's wrong with that, at least he is not directly attacking the civilians, besides, there should be no major issue even if goes inside the guest house, it's not like anyone is staying there, right? Kazakage shook his head and did not bother to answer. 
one of the Umbu shinobi following the four hurriedly filled in the details to Pakura, Captain, two Kanoha shinobi are staying in the guest house of the third section. What? Equals Pakura was taken aback and realized the seriousness of the matter. Gara may be as young as six years old, but he was able to fatally wound Yashimaru. Clearly signifying his danger level. After all, Yashimaru was an elite member of Umbu, as well as, Kazakage's right-hand man, so he was by no means a pushover. So, Gara's strength even at such a tender age is no joke, especially now that he has lost control. It would not be wrong to say that anyone below the level of Kage level strength stands little chance in the face of Gara's rampage. And since Pakura does not know the identity of the two Kanoha shinobi, so she is now worried. If Kanoha shinobi who are here to deliver Hokage's message to Kazakage were to die from Ichibi's rampage, then the responsibility would obviously fall on the heads of Sunagakure. And Suna would have no suitable explanation for Kanoha. The situation would become very complicated. Kazakage knew of his mistake, and he couldn't wait anymore, he instantly brought some gold sand out of the gourd. He as well as other followers stood on the gold sand platform and rushed towards the guest house. In the guest house. The main gate of the house was flung open and later crushed by sand. And in came a child probably around six, years old with red hair and a conspicuous wound on his forehead. It seems the iconic kanji symbol that translates to love was just now etched on the forehead using the sand, the kid also did not have any eyebrows, perhaps because of being born prematurely. But he did have heavy dark circles and eye bags under his eyes. Gara, Gara of the sand. Thought Kuroto as he observed the child. Kuroto was curious as to why did the child come here. Shirsue was on guard, and after a bit of silence, he whispered to Kuroto, Kuroto-san, this child is. Kuroto nodded, "Um, mm, he is the Jinchuriki of Ichibi. A fool can judge that Gara's situation is abnormal. At this moment a hideous face with a twisted expression had taken over the child's face. The child is laughing maniacally, with saliva overflowing from the corners of his mouth. All his expression, as well as behavior, makes people shudder. But Shirsue and Kuroto obviously realized that the kid is a Jinchuriki, and has probably lost control over the bijou. Gara looked at the two, then muttered coldly, both of you will die here. Following his words, sand surged from Gara's feet and as if being telekinetically controlled, it rushed towards Kuroto and Shirsue. Rush. Boom. But before it could even touch either of the two, Kuroto extended his right hand, with his palm facing towards Gara, and immediately a force field appeared around the two. The force field easily blocked all the sand that came towards the two. Realizing the change in expression of Gara, Kuroto muttered, it seems that he has not completely lost control. Kuroto also saw the pain and anger in Gara's eyes, and realizing this, a thought flashed in Kuroto's mind, this seems to be a good opportunity to make Sunagakure owe some favor to me. The next moment a smirk appeared on Kuroto's lips. Gara is is the Jinchuriki, Kuroto does not know what exactly happened that caused Gara to suddenly run amok, but it is probably related to the backstory Gara. With his current condition, it seems very likely that Ichibi is going to go on a rampage. Kuroto doesn't even need to make up some excessive or believable excuse, the act of legitimate self-defense alone is more than enough to make up for what he is planning to do. And Kazakage would obviously not be able to put any blame on the two because of their heroic act of saving the village. After making up his mind, Kuroto's smirk widened. The best way to stimulate Gara is to make him bleed. To make Gara bleed, Kuroto used rain will attraction on Gara. Under the traction force, Gara instantly flew towards Kuroto and was held off by the neck, at the same time, his sand armor instantly broke and all the sand landed on the ground. Although he had started to lose control, Gara still had some consciousness, more accurately his consciousness was still the dominant one, as such when he realized the situation he was in, when he realized that his sand armor was broken so easily and he could no longer control the sand that has always danced as per his thoughts, various emotions appeared on his face. It started with a surprise, then shock following which anger, and finally fear. Kuroto did not pity Gara. he just said, Sorry kid, I am going to be making use of you, for now, maybe I will compensate you in the future if I feel like it. Then Kuroto took a kanai out of his shinobi bag and put it over Gara's shoulder, who was struggling to break free but was unable to do so. Before making the final cut Kuroto instructed Shirsue, Shirsue, get ready to suppress a fully liberated bijou. Shirsue nodded and activated his Manjikyu Sharingan. Gara's heart shuddered when he looked at the sharp light of Kanai, without the protection of his sand armor, Gara was nothing more than a lonely and tortured six-years-old kid, who lacks love and care, he was really afraid, and helpless. 
But did Kuroto care? Obviously no. Without any pity, Kuroto pierced the kunai the very next moment. Pierce. Drip. Drip, drip. Blood dripped through the wound, it trailed along the blade on kunai, dyeing Kuroto's hand red, then fell on the floor. Feeling the physical, Gara's struggle suddenly came to a halt. His eyes landed on the red liquid on Kuroto's hand, and the dripping sound. Gara is obviously no stranger to blood, but this is the first time he has seen his own blood, so he was a little dazed. Kuroto felt that the impact was less, and he moved the kunai a little to increase the size of the wound. After he was sure that Gara would have definitely felt it, he drew out the kunai following which the blood flow increased. All the while Gara's eyes were on the red liquid. When the amount of blood increased, finally there was a scream, ah. Finally realizing that he was hurt more emotions started appearing on his face, and his eyes changed. The very next moment, his body structure started changing, indicating the signs of Ichibi taking full control, and Gara losing consciousness. At this time, Kuroto let go of Gara, who has started to change into Ichibi. Boom. 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 With loud explosive sounds, the Jinchuriki of Ichibi had finally gone berserk, Ichibi has taken control, and what awaits now is the destruction of Sunagakir, just like Kanoha suffered at the hands of Kyubi.